name is Randa Fry, and my position at the uh, ministry church is uh, missions coordinator and director. My name is Jerry Scherzer, and I'm the executive director and executive pastor here at Connect Church. My name is uh, Devin Fry. I am the regional pastor of our multi-site, multi-ethnic, multi-generational church. Um, I've been here at Connect Church about five years. Um, when I came here at Connect, we were one congregation in one location, and now we're one congregation in three locations. The founder of um, Con uh, Connect Church is was my husband, and my son is now the pastor, and then my grandson is on staff too. My name is Devin Fry. My last name Fry. Uh, I'm a third generation pastor. Now I'm not a pastor because my grandfather, my dad did it. I'm a pastor because it was my choice. I actually wanted nothing to do with the church for a long time because I think a lot of churches uh, can have hurt people. But uh, particularly as a pastor's kid, I, I don't know. The church steals your parents away from you, and so although people came to my family for assistance, help, leadership, guidance, spirituality, I kind of was. My, my dad was taken away from me as a young kid. And so in the pivotal years where I really needed him of who I was forming to be, I didn't have my dad over the years as I got to see what the church really provides and why my dad was so busy is because so many people have problems and the demands of ministry and the problems that are happening, uh, you just have to prioritize properly. And so um, my grandfather started his ministry about 35 plus years ago. And uh, he was a great preacher and dynamic communicator, spoke all over the nation, all over the world, actually. Once Ernie came to know the Lord, he knew the Lord had began to speak to him about being full-time in the ministry. And so we started having meetings in Oxbridge. As we kept progressing, he felt impressed that we should come back into our own territory, which was here in Ashland. We came over here to Ashland we met at the dance school. Once again, we outgrew that building. So then we began to look around. This building that the church is in now, they were leasing property. We leased from them for a period of time. And then this one day, one of these elders came in to visit him and they went for a walk outside the building down along the railroad tracks. And while he was going, talking to his friend, he felt like the Lord was saying, this property is going to be yours, the church. The owners of the building had um, been trying to get Ernie to buy it, but their price was you know, several million dollars, and we didn't have several million dollars or access to get it. Lo and behold, the, um, we didn't know it, but the people that owned the building were going bankrupt. So the building was going to auction, and then Ernie and his treasurer went to the auction, and it just turned out that they were the only people that showed up. And it ended up going for $100,000, and we just happened to have $100,000, and so we were able to buy the building for cash. One of our visions here at Connect Church is we, we want to help people um, uh, connect to God and connect with their purpose. So that's why kind of our vision statement is um, connecting to this connected Connect Church. And to really do that, we believe that everybody has a unique purpose that they were designed to accomplish while they're here on earth. And um, we believe that purpose is found in your connection to God. So we always, we start with saying we want people to help to know God. Um, we want to know, we want them to know who He is and how, how much He's loved them and the purpose that He has designed them for. So we want them to know God. We want them to find freedom. So we believe that everybody, we all have issues. We're all stuck on something. There's all, all of us have something in our life that we need freedom from. And so we really want to help people find freedom spiritually, emotionally, relationally. Um, but we believe that freedom starts with knowing who you are in Christ and being able to find freedom spiritually. The third thing we do is we want to help everybody to know their divine and unique purpose. We believe that God has created everyone for a unique purpose. And when you find that purpose and begin to fulfill it, you begin to experience real joy in life. And we were created to live with a life full of joy. And then the fourth thing we do is we want people to make a difference. So once you know your purpose, we want you to we want you to live in that purpose and we want you to be able to make a difference in people's lives no matter what that purpose is. And so we want to help empower people to do that, whether that's in their community, in their workplace, in their church. We want them to make an eternal difference. 
so that they leave a legacy here on Earth and they can leave an eternal legacy um, in heaven. Unfortunately, a lot of people haven't heard about churches, and, and in our church, we don't shy away from that. Um, actually, we needed to that. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry that's happened to you, if that has happened to you. Um, I think churches can be known for rules and restrictions. I do believe in the Holy Word of God. I do believe that is the greatest book uh, in human existence. Uh, and it doesn't just have good advice, but good news that you don't have to pay for your sins. Um, you don't have to carry shame, guilt, weight of all the decisions that you made in the past. But I, there's no doubt about it that uh, the church doesn't have the greatest reputation amongst the community. And so to be honest, I think uh, what I would ask of many others is uh, don't judge don't judge us because of others' mistakes or actions. Because although there are there are some uh, bad restaurants in the world, you don't give up on going to eat. And so very similar to us is, yeah, there's some bad church, but there's a lot of great ones out there. We want more for you than from you. Is we're not asking to take things from you. Uh, some say, you know, the church is for all about my money. They just want my money. No, we want more for you. We want you to be at your purpose. We want you to have the best friends in your entire life. We want you to uh, be full of joy, full of life. And um, that's what we would hope, is that you come into our environment and that's what you receive. But, um, but yeah, I would say life-giving nature is probably what is our major distinction in our church. And what does the church provide? Well, I think primarily I would say three things. I'd say a church provides hope uh, in Jesus. A church provides uh, help, practical assistance to meeting some of your needs. Some people's needs might be physical, some might be emotional, some might be spiritual, some might be relational. And then I think it provides home for people. It's a place of belonging where I belong here. Is you can actually have a spiritual family and some people don't have a mom and dad, they don't have brothers or sisters, or the mom and dad they do have are very present in their lives. And so what I see as the church, especially our church, is provided literally spiritual family that can outlast and outperform your biological family a lot of times. Uh, unfortunately, my grandfather just went home to heaven uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, he was suffering with dementia uh, in his mind uh, for years. And so in some senses, it's a sad reality. In other senses, we're very happy that he's not suffering any longer and has a belief system of ours. Um, there's a scripture that says, we don't grieve like those without hope. And so I have a hope in a future eternity. And so the reason I live my life and do what I do, and this is where I think a lot of churches go wrong. The reason I live my life and do what I do is because I have eternal perspective. And so it's not to control other people at all. And that's what I think some, some communication, preaching from platforms can do. Uh, for us, it's all about eternity is this life is just a minister of people here today, not tomorrow. So because of that, I want to do everything I can to leverage my skills, my gifts, my abilities, my passions, my hurts, and use all of those to help and add value to other people in the 80 plus years you have in this life. We want to leverage it for the kingdom of God.